Yo, it is good YouTube, and welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new cards coming out today. All these tournament update cards uh, that are coming out, and interested to see what all these in-season tournament cards are looking like. Unfortunately, outside of the top three cards, all we're getting today is emeralds, which is weird. Um, this is definitely not what I'm used to for a Friday drop by any means, but it is what it is. We're gonna have to deal with it and see what we can do with it. Uh, and definitely interested to see how these cards continue to evolve and stuff like that over the next couple of weeks and see if they become really usable fun cards or not but before we hop into the video if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button help me push towards the 15,000 subscriber mark on the channel i upload every single day and i would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe without further ado let's hop right into it starting off with the lowest tier cards which is going to be kavan lenny um we're just going to go through all the emeralds real quickly each one just look at what they're looking like as a base card and if there is potential for them to become better kavan looney to start with there is potential for him to become better defensively he's okay not great athletically same thing but he can already kind of shoot and he's already not horrifically slow if they boost up his speed and boost up his three ball a bit this is actually a decently viable card at the center position especially if he gets a little bit of defensive ability as well because um honestly i know he's only six foot nine but the ability to shoot and having decent speed as well is kind of nice especially since kavan lin is generally a good defensive player uh so that's an interesting one to start off with anthony simons can play pg he's six three with a six nine wingspan 86 speed and 85 excel 80 shot three 88 driving dunk no defense this card even when evoed won't have any sort of defense really but he'll be of interesting card no doubt about it uh really capable playmaker slasher and shooter in all likelihood once he's evoed up uh dame dribble style is fine step behind the back means he has the curry slide as well so that's really nice let's see what we're gonna have to see what his release looks like but anthony simons if the blazers play well and he gets some evos will be a really interesting card Nas Reed, another guy who i think is likely to be a very interesting card and i'm right yep he's already got pretty good interior uh decent block rating good dunking and good shooting speed wise not awful either uh 62 is not horrible I think he's going to be a versatile defender who's going to be able to stretch the floor and have some athletic ability. Um, this is going to be a card, again, if the Timberwolves play well, this is a guy who could get a couple of good evos and really turn into an absolute budget beast. Uh, Jalen Williams, 82 overall, 697 wingspan. Another guy who can kind of shoot, can kind of defend, can kind of dunk. Uh, another card who's going to be kind of interesting as a potential stretch big. He's got okay speed, already as a good shooter, even as a base card, his emerald. Um, no idea what Zach Collins release looks like, by the way. I have no clue. But he looks like he's already pretty athletic and then defensively looks like he'll be okay as well. This is another card who might be able to defend, shoot, and have decent speed if he's evoed up. And another guy who's really, really intriguing. Honestly, a lot of these cards, if they get a couple evos and become amethyst and eventually diamonds, things like that they could become really really good cards josh kogi 6'4 has a seven foot wingspan he's a little small shooting guard but the wingspan is amazing he's got great speed and he's a very very good defender already um we see a three-point boost on this card and a driving dunk boost on this card and he'll be okay as well because defensively he's already going to likely be pretty good especially with an evo uh now are the suns gonna win a lot we'll see in the in season tournament they might they might not he does have the book dribble style which is obviously great movement looks okay on this card as well um uh, I don't know. Akogi looks like another guy who's potentially kind of interesting if he were to get some Evos. Kelton Johnson is 6'5 at small forward. He's undersized at small forward. This card is likely not going to be great. Um, very undersized at the small forward position. Worries me a little bit, to be completely honest, but so I'm not super excited about Kelton Johnson. Uh, Amon Thompson can't play point guard. That doesn't surprise me. He is 6'7 with 7 foot wings, but I was hoping he could play point guard. Think about Amon. I mean, he's already incredibly fast. He's already an elite slasher, and he's already a really, really interesting defender. The question with Amon Thompson is going to be, can his three ball become good enough for him to become a usable card at the shooting guard position? Because if he gets a good three ball and his release is okay, he could be really interesting. He's already crazy fast, really, really big, and likely to be a good defender, especially with a couple of evos um so if they boost that three ball up he's interesting Jonas valanciunas is a, a near seven footer he's not going to be super i guess 62 speed is better than i expected but he can already shoot okay he's not going to ever be a great defender in all likelihood will probably likely become a little bit better shooter maybe a little more speed a little more defense could make him okay the pelicans are actually pretty good they've been playing pretty well throughout the season so he's a guy who i think has a chance to get a couple of upgrades uh with some in-season tournament wins so that's an interesting card as well kcp obviously plays for the nuggets which who are maybe still the best team in the league they won the title last year he's already got 85 speed 82 excel 87 three ball can dunk the ball okay and a good perimeter defender kcp two things about this card number one 
the nuggets are really good so there's a good chance he gets an upgrade and gets an evo and becomes a very very interesting viable option at the shooting guard position it's like one of the best budget cards in the entire game and the reason that i say that to be honest is because um even as a base card as an emerald he looks so solid all the way around uh what is his ball handle rating right now uh 75 so if you can get if we can get that boosted up to an 81 or so uh with an evo or something to give him the ability to get an 80 85 ball handle with a shoe that'll allow him the timing burst as well levine dribble style i know is pretty good as a decent push cross and the thing about kcp is he's very likely to get a few evos as well because he plays for a very good team josh green mavs are also four and oh they play the nuggets tonight actually the mavs and the nuggets that's gonna be a great game as a mavs fan i'm really excited to watch that one but uh 86 speed and excel 84 three ball 80 driving dunk a versatile defender already for josh green this card looks exciting he's six seven six ten length span at shooting guard shooting badges look okay defensive badges not aren't quite there yet this is a card who's definitely gonna need some badge upgrades but he's already got the speed the three ball the dunking and the defensive ability where you can tell he's already gonna be a nice card mj dribble style as well i'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that the mavs win tonight because josh green he might even be better than kcp if he's evoed he could be incredible that's a six seven shooting guard uh jared vanderbilt is a six foot eight power forward i probably wouldn't play him at center six eight is a little small at power forward though i don't think that's really a bad uh, a bad size um especially because i know his player builds really good and he's always going to be a great defender i'm very surprised as a base card jared vanderbilt's three ball is already all the way up at a 78 um lakers are also a very good team though they're a team that's going to be very very highly publicized of course but hopefully they can continue to play well and play well in the in-season tournament and vanderbilt gets a couple upgrades as well because jared vanderbilt number one i know he's got a good release he already looks like he's gonna be able to shoot the ball okay gonna have decent athleticism and some defensive ability a lot of these emeralds are looking like they're gonna be the best emerald i mean they're already the best emeralds in the game i'm not gonna lie uh malik monk is an 82 overall 6-3 at shooting guard very very small he can shoot dunk and has decent speed his shooting badges are really really good he's not a good defender um even when this card gets evo at best he's just going to be a fun offensive card defensively he's not going to be able to do anything but that's okay um tht talon horton tucker can't play point guard i kind of expected tht to potentially be able to play the point guard position six four with a seven on wingspan though the wingspan is great speed shooting and dunking defense eh this card doesn't look like he's going to be good enough in any specific area to be a great card if he gets evoed but we'll see i mean if he were to get an evo and it would change into a point guard that would be intriguing uh luke Kennard is six five i know luke Kennard's release is great but he's a guy who's not going to be able to defend he's not going to be super fast and he's not going to be a great athlete he's mainly just going to be a shooter this might be an awesome offline card though um i know his release is amazing and levine push cross is very solid as well luke Kennard not going to be bad i don't think um, Norm Powell, and then we have uh, all of the Eastern Conference players. Norm Powell is 6'4", six, 6'11", six, links man at the shooting guard position. Decent speed, shooting and dunking defensively. Looks average at best. This is another guy. Honestly, it's going to be very dependent on who wins because a lot of these cards are decent, but it's really going to depend a lot on who wins um, in these in-season tournament games. Uh, and hopefully it's the guys who have good cards. Uh, Norm Powell release on slow. That is not going to work. I do not like Lee seeing a slow release time in there. He does have MJ dribble style, but still, that's not going to do it. Denny is a 6'9", small forward. 76 speed excel 75 shot 3 75 driving dunk 78 interior 79 lateral the thing about danny is if he were to get a few evos he looks already really well rounded so if you were to if you were to get a few evos and get 80 pluses in most key areas as a 6-9 small forward he'd actually be a pretty good card the thing is i don't think that's super likely i think the wizards are one of the worst teams in the league uh, and i don't think there's he's super likely to get a bunch of evos because i don't expect the wizards to win a lot of games but i guess you never know with these in-season tournament games gary trent is 6-5 6 9 wingspan 85 speed excel 82 shot 3 dunking is okay defense Defensively, not as good as I was actually expecting him to be. I was thinking he might be a little bit better defensively. Gary Trent's not a bad defensive player in real life, but he's got good speed, good shooting. I don't think the release is great to this Gary Trent Jr. base. Actually, that's what Manu has, and it has been improved this year, so that's fine. Uh, shooting badges are okay on the card already. He's a guy who looks like, unless he gets a bunch of Evos, probably won't be that good, though. Uh, Jalen Duran is a 6'11 center power forward, 7'5 wingspan. Can't shoot the three at all, but he's already athletic with decent speed, good dunking, and going to be a good interior defender and a great rebounder. Um the thing about this card is it unless we get really unless we get really lucky and they decide to boost up his three ball for some reason and the pistons start win a bunch of games and then since in tournament his ceiling as a card is very limited but if he were to get a few upgrades he would become a very interesting card at the center position in all likelihood ben mather had had an amazing diamond at the beginning of last year six five with a six eight wings man 84 speed and excel 83 ball 80 driving dunk uh finishing badges shooting badges look okay needs playmaking and defense if his release is anything like last year's and it is on quick he's going to be absolutely incredible if he gets to be those though this is a guy 
You might want to root for the Pacers to win some games because Ben Matherin, his release is phenomenal. Levine dribble style is good as well. He's going to be able to do some stuff on the court at a high level. DFS is 3 and D, 83 ball, 79 interior, 83 perimeter, 82 lateral, 84 driving dunk, 75 speed. This card, if he's got a good release, is really interesting. No clamps on the base card or anchor, which is a little disappointing. I was hoping especially for clamps on the card, but Mavs legend, um, the Nets are okay. They could win a few games. He could get some Evos and he could become a really, really good budget card because he already looks pretty decent as a base card. Lillard dribble style will work as well. I like the push across out of that. I think DFS looks pretty good. Wendell Carter Jr. This is one of the guys I am most excited for. 6-2 with a 7-3 ring span. He's already a capable shooter, already a decent dunker, and already an okay, but admittedly not great defender. Gonna need some defensive boosts to this card. Hopefully a little bit of speed as well, but a stretch big who might be able to defend at a pretty decent level as well with pretty good speed is another guy who's gonna be interesting if the Magic can win some games. And the Magic are about playing better this season as a whole. I think they're a pretty good team so far, so that could be interesting as well. Josh Hart's 6-4, six, 6-8 six, wingspan uh, at the shooting guard position. He's gonna be one of the best rebounding shooting guards in the game yeah that doesn't surprise me but uh as a whole 81 three ball 75 driving dunk 81 speed decent defense but not great as an emerald nothing too special he's a little undersized as well if he gets fully evoed he could be okay um we'll have to see how the knicks do in the tournament mark williams pure inside not going to be able to shoot probably hopefully we'll be able to get some better speed ability though interior defense is looking really really solid although no anchor on the car this is a card who is going to need some speed and some further defensive badge boosts to become viable because he is an inside and he's not gonna be able to shoot the three but he is very big i know he's got a massive player build he's an intriguing card caleb martin six five six ten wingspan at the small forward position he's another guy kind of like Keldon johnson who's very undersized at small forward looks okay as an all-around card but not great and the heat are a disaster class this year i'm not sure they're going to win a ton of games in the in-season tournament uh caleb martin may not get many upgrades deandre hunter is a hawk uh six eight seven foot two wingspan small forward he's got good size for small forward good three ball shooter and a pretty decent defender besides the low block rating another guy who could be a really nice 3 and d type of card uh, already has decent speed as well if the deandre hunter release is decent kind of like dorian finney smith could be a really good 3 and d small forward Derek white can play point guard which is good six four six seven wingspan 86 speed in excel really really nice perimeter defense he's not great on the interior at all but the perimeter is great in the lateral quickness uh he can dunk wide open and then shooting wise should be okay as well has bronze speed booster Derek white release on quick this is an interesting card uh because he can kind of defend already if he gets some boosts that improve his offense and his speed and maybe even a little bit of that interior defense of that steel rating or something he might be interesting 6-4 pg defends his butt off he's he's an intriguing card karis lavert is a 6-6 shooting guard with 82 three ball um speed is mid dunking is mid defense is very very mid to below mid I know I generally like Karis Levert's release a lot, and empty dribble style is nice, but I don't think that card is looking. He's not jumping off the page as me as the guy who's going to super likely to become a great card. Patrick Williams, I think the Bulls are also kind of a disaster, uh, so he's another guy who probably won't get a ton of upgrades. Also, he's asking for $200 million. I don't know why, but 6'7", 6'11", wingspan, 85 shot three. D speed is okay. Defensively, he's really not special. Uh, his best attribute is his shooting ability, which is interesting because I don't think he's that great of a shooter in real life, but uh, I mean, we'll have to see what his release looks like. He's going to need upgrades defensively to become any sort of viable small forward option. Right now, he's not there yet. Bobby Porter, 6'11", 7'2", wingspan, decent speed, can shoot a three. Defensively, is not expected to be great, though. I think this card, at best, is a stretch five, uh, stretch four, but not a great defensive version. I uh, don't know what his release is looking like right now, but I don't think he looks too insane. And then Tobias Harris is mostly just a stretch three, stretch four, 6'7", 6 6'11", 6 wingspan, a 75 speed, 83, three ball, 75 driving dunk, unfortunately the defense just isn't there uh and he's a card who's going to need significant defensive boosts to become a viable option at the small forward position um i don't know if he'll be able to get those boosts and i don't think so i think it's unlikely but he could be okay there are a lot of interesting cards in these emeralds though uh, i will say and i think there are some guys who really jump off the page as me as potential really really good cards if they get the right upgrades and can get up to amethyst or diamond over the next couple of weeks michael porter jr at amethyst he is the lock-in for the western conference of these cards 610 with a seven foot wingspan hot spots from four to five spots 
or really for everywhere outside the three and most everywhere inside the three ball as well uh 82 speed 81 excel 93 ball 80 driving dunk defensively is not great shooting badges are amazing finishing badges are okay playmaking badges not bad but does not have quick speed booster or unpluckable defensively he's not going to do a lot this card is probably better at the four than at the three as a six foot ten guy although at the three if you have a lock at the two he'll be fine there as well uh mpj release i've heard is very very good this year we'll have to wait and see how that is it is on normal timing not quick but we'll have to see what the mpj release looks like if it's amazing he's one of the best pick and pop catch and shoot type power forward options in the game if not he might be kind of mediocre we'll have to see ball handle rating is an 86 that is high enough time burst that is a positive basic dribble style i do not think is too great though um so that's not awesome but We'll see what he's looking like. Tyler Hero is a 6.5 PG, negative wingspan, but 85 speed and excel, 93 three ball. Can dunk the ball okay. Shooting badges look really good. Playmaking badges look pretty solid, but again, no speed booster. I don't know why. That's I need speed booster on a Tyler Hero card, man, because he's not going to defend. We know Tyler Hero is not defending the ball, so I need more speed out of him, more of a burst. This card is not worth locking in. D-Book dribble style is really nice, though. We'll have to see what the Tyler Hero uh, release looks like. But as far as I can tell so far, does it look like he's going to be worth locking in? He's going to be a bigger PG, but not a good defensive one. And uh, offensively doesn't look exceptional either. And then we have Jokic, who's 6'11", 7'3", weeks, fit, 85 shot three, 85 standing and 75 driving dunk, defensively mediocre as all get out. And he's kind of slow. Uh, shooting badges are very, very good. He's the first big in the game, I think, with Hoff Lomelo's range. Maybe even the first big with Hoff catch and shoot as well. Playmaking badges, I mean, he's got some passing badges and stuff, of course. We know Jokic is an amazing passer but in 2k it's hard to replicate that value um defensively he looks mediocre as, uh, at best honestly he's not huge and release is probably not that great either it's probably one of those catapult slower releases it's easy to contest Jokic is weirdly one of those guys who even though he's one of the best players in the world if not the best player in the world uh probably is the best player in the world right now his cards just are never very good in 2k and this year looks no different i don't expect this Jokic card to really be particularly special at all as a whole in terms of the content we're getting today this is the worst friday drop of the year in terms of the players that we are getting to add to our squads probably but if these emeralds continue to get actually viable upgrades uh, or, or start to get actually viable upgrades on monday and they upgrade key stats and make these cards better and better there are a lot of guys in here that are interesting whether it's looney anthony simons nas reed uh Amon thompson is intriguing to me kcp josh green jared vanderbilt uh luke Kennard, kind of uh, Denny, if he would get upgrades, if the Wizards were good, would be interesting. Jalen Duren's okay if he develops a three ball. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith is intriguing to me. Wendell Carr Jr., very intriguing. Um, DeAndre Hunter is going to be pretty good. There's a lot of interesting cards in these Emeralds that if they do get the right Evos and get souped up, they might be some of the better cards in my team at their positions and some absolutely amazing budget cards because the fact of the matter is you can buy all these cards for 13K, which is a lot if you're trying to lock in Jokic. It's not worth locking in for Jokic, but it is admittedly, I would say, pretty intriguing in terms of being able to buy one card for 13k and even up to an amethyst or a diamond here in a couple of weeks gives people an interesting ability to add new cards to their team and add good cards to their team for a cheaper amount of mt as these evos progress but right now without the evos these cards just aren't that exciting as base cards so with that being said that is going to do it for this video i hope y'all did enjoy if you did make sure you hit that like button leave a comment and subscribe i'll be back with more 2k content very very soon and i appreciate y'all peace